Well, Matt, it's great to catch up with you. Um, interesting backdrop you've got there. The party time at your house, is it? Yeah, something like that. It was Harry's birthday the other day, so we got some balloons delivered and you know, couldn't really do much for him, obviously, with, with the lockdown, so I just tried to get some balloons and a cake, party hat, stuff like that, try and make you feel a bit special. I had a lockdown birthday myself recently, so it's all about as the deliveries for me and see if you can have a party that way. Yeah, it was just, just trying to, you know, make him realise that we can't really take him anywhere. And once this is over, that we'll, we'll make him we'll have him a party and, you know, take him out for food or something like that. Yeah. yeah. You, uh, if I'm right, you've got four kids, which must be quite an interesting time, lockdown with four kids. I, I've got two, and that's, that's interesting enough. It is, yeah. I mean, um, three of them are uh, they're 10, 8 and 6 now, so they pretty much, you know, they look after themselves. They're playing on the PlayStation and they're playing outside, playing football and, and things like that. So it's just a little one really that needs uh, to keep entertained, which is which is quite tough. You know, because she gets, she's getting she's getting bored quite easy. She's eighteen months now, so she's tossing around. That, and, you say that the three kids can be quite demanding on your time. They, they can, yeah. You know, they're, they're always asking for you know things, and they need something to eat or they need something to drink and stuff like that. But you know, we've pretty much got nothing else to do, so um, we're. We're, uh, we're looking after them as, as best we can and trying to keep them entertained, you know, without letting them on the PlayStation for too long. But with nothing else to do, it's, it's quite difficult. From your point of view, it must be great to have such quality time with the family because it's, you know, although you, it's not a long day necessarily in, in the football industry, you're there every day working and, and time to just be with the family is incredibly rare. It is, yeah. Um, and they've got a, with spending time with them, you know, we've had a, we've had a few quizzes and we play Monopoly a few times and things like that. It's just things that we wouldn't necessarily get time to do because usually we're picking them up from school and we've got after school tennis or football with, with, with one of them. So the time that we're getting is, is, is good, you know. We, I'm treating it pretty much like the, the off-season mm. um, because I don't think we're going to get much of one this time. So I'm trying to spend a lot of, as much of time doing different things with, with the kids. We went on a few walks and things like that. We wouldn't probably get the time to do usually. So no, it's good. I'm, I'm enjoying the time at the minute, to be honest, but you know, I'm obviously missing the football. Uh, so how, how are you keeping busy in terms of, of the workload that, that the club presumably provided you? Well, because I'm still um, coming back from injury, uh, the knees, I think it's all right now. Obviously, we've not tried to play football, but it feels good. So in the last couple of weeks, Ali, the physio, has been sending me um, things to do on my knee. We had a bit of uh, equipment sent out from, from the club as well, you know, little mats and, and bands and things like that to try and um, keep me ticking over and keep my knee improving. Um, and I bought a treadmill which is quite interesting because when it came, it was German. You got it off Amazon and it came and it turned up. It was, I opened the instructions and they were in German. So that was interesting. Luckily enough, it was quite easy to put together and we just used the pictures, but I went to plug it in and the plug was European. So, so I, had to go back on and order a, I had to go back on and order a European plug adapter. So, you got plenty of uh, time to learn your German on the post side. She, she wouldn't have I did that in school, but don't remember any of that. <laughs> Looks so like how I'm is the knee? Now, so I'm on there pretty much every day. So how is the knee? It's fine. I'm uh, doing the treadmill and, and you know the work that Ali's sending me. So um, hopefully, uh, come to the football, it's fine as well. Obviously, it's a lot different, changing direction, tackling, and you know jumping, uh, things like that. But it's, it feels fine at the minute. So I'm just hoping that when we get back in, you know the physios will assess it. We'll probably do a couple of days of dynamic movements and things like that to make sure it's fine and then hopefully I can go back into training. That is the one good thing about this lockdown. I know we, before we, you went away we spoke about your knee and you were a bit concerned that it might be more longer term but we hopefully will come back with a, a clean bill of health. Yeah, I think that's one thing that I, I thought as well and uh, you know the longer, it, the longer it goes on like you said my knee's got more time to recover so obviously while the lads are missing football you know self, quite selfishly I'm, I'm, uh, I'm liking the time that my knee's got to get back to um, you know full strength so I'm ready to go. Yeah, and, and how are you missing your good mate Tarky? Because you two are normally inseparable. <laughs> yeah, I am missing Tarky. Um, you know, we spoke on the phone uh, a couple of times and, you know, we're on the PlayStation, but, um, you know, not seeing him is it's, uh, it's tough. You know, you see him every day for the last, what, five years or, you know, however long he's been there now. So, um, yeah, it's, it's hard. He's, he's obviously a good friend of mine. And I think hopefully when the, the, um, the lockdown restrictions get, um, you know, took off, we'll, uh, we'll be able to see each other again. You can clear up a rumour for me. There was a suggestion, this is going back a while, that you two used to obviously train together, travel to, to work together, travel home together, go to your separate houses, off to separate bedrooms and get on the computer and play against each other. Was that, is that true? Um, yeah, I think so, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> maybe, not, maybe not every day, because uh, obviously with the family and the, and the wives and girlfriends, it's not allowed, but 
Um, yeah, a lot of time we'd be pretty much inseparable at football. Come home and, and get on the PlayStation. Yeah, you know the away trips are the best ones where we just sit at the back of the bus talking all the way down and get into the room and play PlayStation. <laughs> and regular Zoom meetings, I guess, between the squad just to keep yourself uh, in touch with everybody and also from an extra exercise point of view and training. Point. Uh, yeah, we spoke to each other a few times. Yeah, obviously when the um, the PFA were you know asking about the, the pay cuts and things like that, the lads had a few meetings and, and things to discuss it and. I think we've come to the right agreement with that. And, you know, we've got the WhatsApp group. People are talking on there all the time, you know, sending a few videos in, trying to cheer people up. And um, it's just, yeah, staying in touch. And everyone's just looking forward, I think, to getting back now. The Players Together venture that's been put together by, by Jordan Edison and the captains has, has gone down extremely well. Uh, you, you came for a lot of criticism as players ahead of, of that. But, of course, it was all being planned well before. Mr. Hancock's intervention. I guess as a as a unit, as a as a team, and as a squad, you're all wholly behind it. Yeah, we are for sure. Yeah, um, we we wanted to do our bit, and um, you know, obviously we're in um, we're in a good situation in our lives. Um, you know, we're very privileged to be there. We've worked hard to be here. So I think that we we well, we all said that we wanted to help any way we could, but we just thought that the you know the media and the you know kind of you know like Hancock and people like that attacking just just us really. Um, saying that we should do it and, and things like this and you know people don't realise is well they do but they don't really take it into account you know we've got families we've got lives you know we live to our means obviously the the, the money that we're getting is, is very good um, but you know it's, it's, it goes on to things that you know for the future we're saving and for you know housing and things like that we need that need paying for and the children um, you know we're still, we're still having to pay children school fees even though they're not at school you know things like that so um, we all decided that we wanted to you know, put some money in somewhere and help out the, the way we could, but we were just a bit frustrated the way that people were going about, you know, attacking us and saying that we should do it this way and that way. Mm. It seems to be well received by everybody as well. I think it's something that, it seems to have brought football together, doesn't it? I think so, yeah. Um, you know, we came out, and you know, Jordan Henderson, I think, has been at the forefront of it with the uh, with the idea for the, you know, the fundraising charity thing and Ben and uh, Hart, yeah, had a couple of Zoom meetings about it and told us that, you know, Pretty much all the captains and the clubs teams were, were right behind the idea and to get some money in and try and just keep it, um, you know, between ourselves that we're doing it. Um, we don't want anyone else outside to tell us what to do with our money sort of thing, but we're more than willing to help out where we can. Mm. Uh, now, of course, football will eventually start up again. We don't know when, we don't know where, but <laughs> one of the, the things that's being mooted is behind closed doors. Um that would be an interesting one to play nine games behind closed doors to finish off the season. What are your thoughts on that? No, well, obviously nobody wants to do that. Um, you know, the fans are the, uh, the driving force of football. Everyone knows that. Um, you can't be a good atmosphere on a weekend, you know, um, just walking out at the start of the game with the atmosphere and then, you know, mm. scoring and things like that. Uh, the atmosphere is the main thing I think, that, you know, everyone plays for. Uh, the fans, they live and, you know, they live and breathe football. They work hard all week to come in the weekend and watch the game, so it'd be tough for them, I think, as well. Um, but obviously, I don't know the ins and outs of it. Um, but if the season needs to be finished by a certain point, or it is, I think it's definitely got to be finished. And if that is the option, then you know we'll have to do it. But it's obviously something. With, if we can avoid it, then I think most uh, players and fans alike would want to avoid it. So it'd be a, would be a really strange one because even pre-season, you, you get a smaller yeah. crowd to have no crowd there and try and get it up. For a game and, and the intensity that a game brings, it would be very, very strange for everybody. I think it would be very strange. Yeah, um, I don't think I've ever had a, an actual game like you say, where even a pre-season game or a reserve game, things like that, where there's nobody at all at the game. Um, so it would, it would be very strange. And like I said before, I'm not sure if there's any other option. Um, but obviously, if, if you can avoid it, then it'd be, it'd be better. Yeah, and before then, of course, you're going to need if what is effectively another pre-season. I know you're ticking over all, and you've got these exercises from the sports science team, but it's going to be another four or five weeks of ramping it up, I guess, before you can kick a ball again. In in, in essence, yeah, it is. Yeah, I mean, it's all right, uh, like you say, the treadmill and the, and the bike, things like that that the lads are doing. But you know, it's nothing. Nothing can compare to being out on the pitch, um, and the intensity, like you say, of the game, that you, you can't really replicate uh, at home. So. <clears throat> Obviously, the manager's big on on fitness and um, and running hard, things like that. So the lads have got to be in shape to hit the ground running when we get back on the first day, because uh, we know full well that, like you said, there's going to be three or four weeks again of of a, like a mini preseason, so to speak. 
sports science team keeping you on your toes with the stats of how people are doing? Because I know you're a pretty competitive group. Uh, yeah, we've got a few. Um, we've got with um, Cav the um, what's it called? The GPS guy sent us some stuff out, but you know, unfortunately, it doesn't work if you're standing still. So the treadmill it doesn't work on there and stuff like that. So that being uh, German, we did. I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> so I'm still trying to work out how to connect my phone to Bluetooth, but I'll give up. <laughs> but I think in the next couple of weeks we're going to try, obviously isolated, but we'll go and try and find some grass nearby yeah. that everyone can do some sort of set running and uh, get the GPS on, and then we can we can see that the, the lads can track it then. And obviously, when they get back, they know how much work the boys have done, and um, it's, it's, you know they, they need to know how fit boys are, so they can go in and just and, and do a lot of running. But the, the boys need to be ready, you know, muscles need to be ready as well, because you don't want to be losing people straight yeah, away. Yeah, of course, of course. And just finally, man, I know it's I think it's 23 years ago this week that your beloved Chesterfield were in the semi-final, and I've you seen that. Dice there. I know a little dicky bird told me that you're in touch with him recently. Uh, yeah, I'm up in the picture. I'm going to try to find it. Goal. He doesn't talk about it much, you know. Yeah, I bet he doesn't. <laughs> uh, but I believe you were at the game, weren't you? I was there, yeah. I'm trying to find this picture now that my mum sent me. That's you, with the blue and white. In the, in the middle there, with face painted, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we all met up, yeah, and then bus, I think it was um, Old Trafford, was it? I remember the penalty. Um, and then I remember John Howard's non-goal. That was... Uh, <laughs> We that was a sliding doors moment, wasn't it? Yeah, I know. And then, uh, no, it was a good day out. Yeah, very good. Enjoyed it. And then yeah. uh, the replay didn't quite go as well, but, no. And then you got 23 years later working on him. Oh, yeah, 23 <laughs> years. <laughs> Listen, Matt, it's been great to watch you. Great to catch you up. Uh, no, keep no, your kids. That, that'll probably be, you'll be probably covering a few miles with the four kids, never mind doing the treadmill. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Alvina Sen, we'll speak again. Right. Cheers, mate. See you later. Bye. Bye. Hello Clarets fans, Phil Bird here. Make sure you subscribe to Burnley's official YouTube channel and turn on notifications, otherwise you might miss moments like this. Oh, what a goal! <laughs> and Wood was there to finish it! Do the spit of Glenn Little, look at us. We hope you enjoyed the video and we look forward to seeing you at the next one. Up the Clarets.